May God bless you. It's a pleasure to have you partake of this great word of the kingdom we will be sharing today. My focus today is to convey to us some principles regarding followership. Followership, not fellowship. Followership, okay? Discipleship, then becoming apostles. Okay. This is so important because today we confuse followers for disciples. We take followers to mean disciples, which is not true. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of laws, a kingdom of mysteries. So much is contained in this book of visions, the Holy Bible, that I think we are yet to discover. May I suggest this to you? There is never any graduation out of the teachings of the kingdom of God. You cannot graduate out of it. Jesus came with that message. And so I want to welcome you to John chapter 1. Let's look at a few verses and let's talk. It's a discussion that will be interactive. And uh, I call it interactive because you'll be getting it right where you are, though virtually, but it will be touching you, be causing you to go through the pages of scriptures. Let's, let's start with something interesting and inspiring. John chapter 2, on the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. And but Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. So Jesus and his disciples actually was invited into this marriage. I wish we do that in our lives all the time. Bringing Jesus, his kingdom intentions and philosophies into our relationships, especially marital relationships. That's wisdom for you. And when they, when they wanted wine, the, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. Okay, verse 4, Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Okay, shocker. Jesus never rebuked his mother. He didn't. If you want to translate this and get an understanding of this verse 4, put it in another way. Mother, what do you want me to do? You see, Jesus so far is known as the son of Mary. Hmm. How about he now reveals his divine aspect through the manifestation of the miracles? The mother spoke so because she knew. This mother bore witness when this child was dedicated in the temple. The mother understood the prophetic words. See, that the angel spoke. The mother had ex the mother had experiences even when she visited her cousin Elizabeth. Her John leaped for joy in the womb and all of these. And she knew therefore that my son is extraordinary. He's really the Messiah. So Jesus' mother is saying, do a miracle. In other words, show yourself. Praise God. That is why she would go on in verse 5 to say, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Hallelujah. Now back to the topic of the day. I pray. This just inspired you, especially the man of God right there. Okay, let's look at something interesting right here. I want to take from John chapter 1, verse 35. It says this. I've been studying this, and I really felt inspired about this. Uh, John chapter 1, verse 35 says this. And again, the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples, underline that word disciple. All right. The word to disciple simply means to train. When you are a disciple, it means you are a student. You submit yourself to a master, one who teaches, one whom you admire and learn their ways to become like them. So a disciple is actually a student. Whenever you say you are a disciple, know you have become a student of whoever is discipling you. Go into all the world and teach the good news about this kingdom. Mm -hmm. Make sure that men get saved. They get an understanding of, of the gospel of the kingdom of God. Baptize them as a symbol. Very important symbolic aspect. Symbolic ordinance. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Or baptize them in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay? When you do so, teach them to obey every word I have given you. See? And when they do so, of course, after having heard the kingdom message, the end will come. Now, respectively, Matthew 28, 18 forward, making disciples of all nations, go make disciples of all nations, and Matthew 24, verse 14. See, it's not enough to be a follower. 
A follower simply follows. They have no commitments. They simply want to learn, perhaps before they become disciples. That you are a follower of a man of God, a particular ministry, a leader, and all of that does not necessarily mean that you are their disciple. Followership is important on condition that you become a disciple. Many follow, only a few become disciples. How can crowds follow a man? And he ended up with just 12 people. My God, think about that. And those who are close, bless are ye which have continued with me in my sufferings. And I appoint unto you a kingdom. Luke 22, all right, 21 to 22. Uh, Luke 21, Luke 22, excuse me, please. Uh, verse 28 to 29. This is very important. See, followership, persistence, becoming a disciple, getting to understand the heart of the master will always entitle you to blessings. I remember people who followed people in the Bible became addicted disciples. They got blessed. Elisha got a mantle from Elijah. It was as a result of discipleship. Praise God. And many others. So, guess what? Verse 36, and looking upon his, oh, these are disciples of John. See, it's the next day after John stood. Prior to this, by the way, I must say this. John saw Jesus. John had gotten a vision from God. When you see a man as you start baptizing, that the Holy Spirit shall descend and actually stand on like a dove. No, you are looking at the Messiah, all right, that the prophets had told others while whom you came to preach the message of the kingdom, to actually start preparing the way to create an awareness that there is the kingdom of God. And it's been this kingdom that God wanted for man, see. So that's why John came preaching repentance and emphasizing the kingdom of God. And that's also why Jesus had to submit to John as his teacher, symbolized by the baptism he came to John, okay? Because John was preaching kind of what he wanted, okay? By then, there were many schools, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they had their schools of thought, their belief system. People were becoming their disciples, but Jesus chose John because John came to actually unveil the lost kingdom message. John was not the one to actually really do it per se, but John prepared the way for it, for the Messiah. He created that awareness in the minds of people about an incoming Messiah with a kingdom, the kingdom that was lost, okay? So, John now saw Jesus, and of course, you know, he acknowledged this. And John had had disciples, people who were following him. He was gaining followers that became disciples. So, verse 35 says, The next day after John stood of John 1 and two of his disciples. Who are these two of his disciples? We will see. And looking up upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Now, John one twenty nine describes Jesus as the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Just that statement, mindful of the fact that these people have been waiting for a Messiah, they now know Jesus, is actually the Lamb of God. Once John declared what will happen, verse 37 says, And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. John chapter 1, verse 37. Remember, our focus is followership, then discipleship. Of course, that ends you up as a master. Trust no student, trust rather no one who claims to follow you so much, loves you so much, but is not discipled by you. Because in discipleship, you get the doctrine of the master. You submit to it totally. This is also wisdom for you in case you have a ministry or any organization. Before you hand over to a successor or you choose your successor, make sure that that's a disciple of you, not necessarily a follower. See, a follower is far off. A disciple is in the house. Praise God. Disciples will become friends. Disciples will become sons. That's wisdom for you and me. Praise God. Notice this. These two disciples of John, once they got, they switched calm, they switched tutelage, they switched masters, they now became followers of Jesus, not disciples of Jesus yet. That's a powerful observation I want us to grasp right here. Paul says, be ye followers of me even as I am of Christ. Okay, but we understand that Paul is an apostle. He was chosen as such, yet he addicted himself as a follower of Christ that became a total student of Jesus Christ, of course, and actually became an apostle. Praise God. Paul wanted us to admire and do exactly what he was doing. All right. Interesting. 
John is losing disciples that are becoming our followers. Is it possible to swap like this? Yes. This is also what I describe as a change of spiritual parenting. You notice I made some posts on my wall on Facebook, my Facebook page in Challenging Care. Kenneth, if you're following that, if not, you should follow that and follow our church page, CAG Church, about spiritual parenting in the kingdom. All right? Spiritual father, mother, son, you know, daughter relationship. Generally, just, you know, peeling through different aspects of scriptures and removing some nuggets that are powerful, that inspire. See, it is possible to change spiritual parents in the kingdom. Note that John's disciples are about leaving him to start off, to start off rather a new relationship with a new master. The good news is when they left John as his disciples, they became followers first of Jesus. Don't forget that. Don't forget that, please. John 1 verse 37, the two disciples, disciple students, now heard him and speak and they followed him. So Jesus turned and saw them. And you know what he did? He's following him and said, what do you seek? Of course, they will answer and say, Rabbi, which means teacher. All right, master. So they now understood if he is the Lamb of God, definitely this is the master he must of course by jewish law he had grown he is 30 years old and uh, he qualifies to be a teacher because all this why he had submitted to john's teachings i believe so all right even if it was not directly sitting and hearing from john the symbolic baptism and other aspects perhaps not captured by scripture praise god he came with the kingdom and if he came as the messiah obviously he's a teacher praise god Verse 39, he said unto them, come and see where I live. And of course, the Bible will say that they went there and they abode with him that day for it was about the 10th hour. And this is a very important thing for us to note right here. John 1 verse 39 never suggests that Jesus was a poor man. I'm against anyone who teaches he was a poor person. And they try to frustrate what we teach as principles of prosperity in the kingdom. Look, if you are listening to me right now, this man talking to you is a very authoritative person when it comes to emphasizing kingdom prosperity and wealth. I don't apologize for that to nobody all over the world. I have seen the mockery poverty does to people. You don't love to be prosperous in this kingdom. You're a mistake. As a kingdom citizen, one of the heritages we have in Christ is actually wealth and prosperity, splendor and honor. We are fellow kings, junior kings rather, to the Lord. So nobody must teach you that Jesus was a poor man. It's a lie. John chapter 1 verse 39 says he had where he was dwelling. Secondly, if you study further, you will notice that Jesus actually had an accountant in his ministry. That's not the language of a poor man. He lacked nothing. A man who was poor will not say, go on that court. If they ask you who is actually asking you to do this, tell them the master or the owner has need for it. What a word. That doesn't sound like a poor person. I don't serve no poor king. If Jesus is a poor king, I will never be interested to be a part of this kingdom. Let's continue. Praise God. All right, so he, they went and dwelt with him. Okay, one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Okay, so by John's account, the first disciple of John, that the disciple of John rather, that became the first follower of Jesus Christ will be Andrew. But Andrew had his brother called Simon Peter. Praise God. What do you think will happen? Let's go further. He first found his own brother Simon. He first of all had to go to his brother. What if we of getting family members engaged in the pursuit of the kingdom agenda. This is wisdom, friends. Let us seek to see to it that we encourage our loved ones to be a part of this. So he went to his brother first and said unto him, We have found the Messiah. All this while, people had heard prophecies, they read prophecies, they were waiting for the Messiah to manifest, to come. And they have found the Messiah. He says, So we found the Messiah, which is being interpreted to mean Christ. Christ means the anointed king. Praise God. So, verse 42, and he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, that shall be called Cephas, which is by interpretation meaning a stone. Let me end here and let you know something before I continue on this followership, discipleship. Okay. On no account, Jesus founded his church on Peter. For those who think Peter is the founder of the church, Oh, Jesus built his church on Peter. That's the greatest mistake you're making. 
the word Peter, Cephas, Peter, is Petros is in Greek, all right? And the word Christ is Petra, a massive rock. Peter is simply a stone. Jesus is the solid rock on which everyone bases foundation. And this is so important for us to understand right here. Uh, there are other references I could give you, like when you read the book of Corinthians that talks about, you know, how the Israelites left from Egypt and went through the Red Sea. That was a form of water baptism. They passed through, they drank, drank of the same spirit to a rock, the Bible says. And that rock is Jesus Christ. Your name is Peter, yeah, but that name Peter means Petrosis. Upon the premise that your name is Peter, which is similar to me, Christ, Petra, the solid rock, I will build my church. I am the Christ, the founder of the ecclesia. That is a word for us to think about. I'm welcoming you back to part two of followership, discipleship in the kingdom of God. Praise God.